In this tutorial in CyberLink Power Director, we do our second look at how to combine some of the tools that we're learning to clean up a video taken with a smartphone. In the previous exercise in this uh, two-part series, we showed you that one of the problems we had in this particular clip was that the subject was too far away from the camera. And so we used our crop and zoom, which we have a tutorial on, uh, to zero in on this young woman playing the violin in the street. And uh, so now we have a better visual, but we still have another problem. In the course of this uh, cell phone video, the camera uh, gets interested in the building across the street. So I'm going to move the scrubber here and play this, and you will see what's going on. <laughs> And so we see much more of the building than we do of the performer. And then the camera moves back. So what can we do about that? Well, in the previous exercise, we showed you not only how to do the crop and zoom on this video, we also inserted a couple of markers. We, uh, we began with activating the clip marker track, and then we inserted this marker in the place where the camera drifts away, we put another one where it comes back. Now we did that for a special reason, because when we use these markers, we they create a little bit of a snap to area in your timeline. So what we're going to do, instead of just letting the camera drift away and drift back for no apparent reason, we're going to put some uh, pictures in that I also received from this guy's cell phone that show a little bit about the culture of the place where this happens. This happened to have been photographed in Israel. And uh, so I'm going to take this and drag this down to track two. And you notice I have this blue line at the clip marker. So that's helpful. It helps me understand that this will snap to that. And I have this uh, Americanized version of a Pizza Hut right there. We'll take another picture that's just a street picture uh, taken in or near that area. Another one of uh, the ubiquitous Coke sign, uh, this time accompanied by Arabic. And then this other one taken at that time of a ripoff of Starbucks called Stars and Bucks. And so what I'd like to do is have it, instead of drift away to a building, uh, move to these pictures that show a little bit about what's going on around the performer. The problem I have, as you notice, is the pictures are too long. They're, the sequence is defaults to five seconds. All I need to do to change that is highlight all of them and click on the duration above the timeline track. It says they're five seconds. Let's change it down to two seconds and click on OK. Now they're too short. Okay, so let's try uh, bumping them up. I'll click duration again. We'll do two seconds and five frames each. Let's try that one. Now that's pretty good. I might get away with six, but five isn't bad. So that gives me uh, a pretty, pretty good, pretty good look at how to make them just about what I want. But now, if I play it, you'll notice it still feels a bit abrupt. It snaps away, and not bad, but it could be better. So we're going to rely on another tool we've learned about, and that is transitions. So in order to do that, I'm going to go to my transition room, which is the lightning bolt or the rectangle. And let's try some transitions. Let's start with a, what's called a prefix. We have a tutorial on that as well. A prefix transition only affects one object on one side. And so we'll start the sequence with a blur. And to be consistent, we'll end it with a postfix transition, which is a blur. So that gives me a way to uh, move into these four slides. And then when we get actually into the, uh, the, the bulk of the transitions, let's try something else. Um, let's try the shove. I'm going to take this and drag this down, put a shove between slides one and two, and two and three, 
and 3 and 4. Uh, so I'm using two different types of transitions, one to move away from the artist and back to the artist, another one to move between the objects. So we'll go ahead and uh, back up a little bit and play this. I'll enlarge it for you and see what we have here. Click on Movie and go ahead. Okay, that almost looks intentional. Uh, we, I wish we had a few more bars of music at the end, but there's nothing I can do about that. But overall, this short little clip uh, looks a lot more like we put some design and thought into it uh, than what we received originally. This is just one of the ways in which you can combine your tools in uh, PowerDirector in order to get the kind of results that uh, really make a difference. Thank you.